My parcel's arrived. No, your damn parcel hasn't arrived. But uh, Fergus in the kitchen did pass the word that Jerry is searching the British quarters sometime this morning. All right? Yeah. Search. Scramble. Search. Search the British quarters. Fergus didn't say anything about this. Schneller, meine Herren, antreten bitte. Engländer links, Polen rechts. What are you doing? My compass. You? Passport. Any picture in it? Not yet. Give it to me. And you make a fuss. Was ist denn das? Der nächste, vorreden. Der. Der. Schauen Sie nicht so blöd herum, kommen Sie her. Über mit denen sie das kommt. You have no right to open those. They've already been okayed by the German censor. You recognize that? That's the official German censor stamp right there. According to the Geneva Convention, any letters passed by the censor become the absolute private property of those to whom they've been addressed. Go ahead, open that string. You'll be breaking the Geneva Convention if you do. Look, do I have to spell it out for you? Censorship is not a matter of interpretation. Those letters are now my own personal private property. I'm going to ask the senior British officer to tell your commandant about this. Brent bungled it. He lost his nerve.
attention, please. Medical inspection. You should stand at attention in the presence of a senior officer. Get off your clothes. Take off your shirt. Dress. I want it noted on this officer's record. The prisoner is listless and unsoldierly. You can make another note on the prisoner's record. The prisoner is hungry. Silence, please. So what is the plan? Well, as an American, Phil is the only one in Kolitz with a functioning embassy in Berlin. Well, go on. Well, apparently, Americans can still travel freely around Germany. Phil's had a letter from a friend in New York. A newspaper man. He was in Berlin a couple of months ago. Provided that they have the right papers. Now, what we need is another passport, a press card, and a good suit. You've still got to get out of the castle. Well, we know that. But what is unique about this plan is that he doesn't have to cross any borders. All he has to do is to get as far as the American embassy in Berlin. But wait a minute. Didn't you forfeit your American citizenship when you joined the RAF? Technically, yeah. I think the precise phrase is a presumption of loss of citizenship, but only a presumption. I know one of the second secretaries at the embassy in Berlin. I think, I think I can get them to send me to the United States. Well, your own people are hardly likely to hand you over to the Nazis. You no, know, it depends politically where they're at. It'd be hell of a stick in the American papers if they did. Yeah. See, the first thing I do is get to Bill Shire if he's still broadcasting from Berlin. That's the one thing that the Germans are still sensitive about, American public opinion. But you could do something about American public opinion if you got there. Might make a little difference. Maybe. Well, what we need is a plan to get Phil out of here. Now, I know he's not on the list, but what do you say? He has the best chance of anyone of making a home run. I think it's a good idea. Well, it's better than good. Stand good. Fine. They're just having some fun. That's despair. Don't you see it? They know they're never going to get out of here. There's a rumor the German armies reached Leningrad. Leningrad? Napoleon made it to Moscow. That means the Germans have advanced about a thousand miles in ten weeks. It'll be winter soon. It's over ten miles a day. The winter will help the Russians to regroup. Look, Germany holds Norway, Denmark, Holland, France, Yugoslavia and Greece, most of North Africa, and now 90% of Western Russia. How long do you think it's going to take to dislodge them from all that? 10 years, 20 years? 
the more countries they occupy, the thinner they are on the ground. I say 10 years. Yeah, and in 10 years, they'll be 100 years old. But once you start thinking you're going to lose, you're finished. I don't think we're going to lose. Not in the end. Yeah, well, two Dutchmen made it, and a Frenchman. Not just out of here. Clear away. Home runs. And I'm going to make it, too. All the way to 52nd Street. George. I'd like to lend us a hand. Me? We're working on Phil's run. Keep you busy. What do you want me to do? I'd like to sketch that one. The one with the limp. Hmm? My report for your signature, Herr Commandant. Again? It is Friday, Herr Commandant. Oh, yes, of course. Uh, please sit down. Thank you. You were at Bremerhaven before you joined us, hmm? That is correct. And before that? Uh, Bremerhaven was my first posting. Hmm? Before that, I was a simple doctor. Had no heroic ambitions. Uh, very few soldiers have. <laughs> and now? To do my best. Are you managing to settle down all right here in Colditz, Hermione? As no use pretending. It is not exactly the assignment I would have chosen. <laughs> well, that is true for most of us here. The prisoners, as well as the staff. Ah, but a doctor pretending to be a soldier like me has to be twice a soldier and obey orders. Yes, of course. To the prisoners as well as to the staff. And do you find them difficult? The prisoners, of course, I mean. If you'll excuse me speaking frankly... Please. I find a certain quality of indiscipline among them, especially the British. It's not always a good thing to insist on too much outward show of discipline. We have occupied practically the whole continent of Europe. We cannot make the peoples of those countries like us, but we can cause them to respect us. I hope so. But we must understand the meaning of respect. Uh, technically, the whole matter is defined in the German military code. A man can be forced to salute and still withhold his respect, especially here in Colditz. Oh, please do not misunderstand me, Herr Commandant. I am not insisting that the prisoners should salute me. I'm speaking of all senior officers. If they salute one, they must salute them all. A prisoner cannot be allowed to decide for himself when he will obey the army code and when he will not. That would only lead to a state of, um, mutiny. My officers can always count on my support. Thank you, Herr Commandant. Thank Decided to use this. Come and have a look. You see those cans? They change them every Friday between four and five. They take the garbage to a farm three miles south of here. But the pigs don't eat, they use as compost. It's one thing about the Germans, they never waste anything. It's always the same two men. There are only two men on that farm. One of the Dutch heard them complaining about it. And this is the man we want you to change places with. But what are you going to do with this guy, Peter? Uh, Tim and I drag him into a doorway. I think if we can keep him quiet for a good half hour to say it, Tim. 
Right, so you take him behind the delousing shed. Now, how long is he out of sight of the guards? Have you timed that? Six seconds. So when you're taking care of him and I'm making the switch, that'll be all right. But what about when I hit the guards at the gate? Well, we thought of that, Tim. Try that on. That's very good. Now try the cap. It's broad daylight, you know. Peter? It's good. It's very good. Don't forget the limp. He drags his foot. Which one, George? Hmm? Which foot? Hmm. Come on, George, it's important. Um, right, right, Phil. Now, you wait till he's emptied the last can. By that time, he'll have passed the guard of the gate five times. They'll hardly look at you. One other question. What about the other man in the truck? I'm gonna have to ride off with him. What am I gonna do about him? Well, probably wouldn't fool a soldier in daylight. But it might keep that farm worker quiet till you're out into the country. Next Friday, then. Raz, dwa, i energicznie. Raz, dwa, raz, dwa. Raz, i szybciej. Raz, i szybciej. Raz, i szybciej. Oddychaj, bo umrzesz. Raz, dwa. Raz, dwa. I wciągnij brzucho. Raz, dwa. Raz, dwa. Raz, dwa. I dosyć. I rano na bok. Ręce i raz, dwa, trzy, cztery i trzy, maj, tem. Better change now. Next time around. Halt! Do you realize you can be caught martial for failing to salute a senior officer? All he had to do was salute. I can have another shot next week. Well, how about that new German doctor? Yeah, we met. Pompous ass. You know what he said? He said I was suffering from listlessness. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. That parcel from my wife, it hasn't come yet, has oh, it? Oh, come off it, Simon. Some fat Swiss probably scoffed it. Probably oh. lying in some disused railway station covered in <laughs> dust. Hey, Simon. <laughs> Oh, peaches! It's for you. Solitary special. Welcome back. <laughs> Take it easy. Yeah, I will. Mm -hmm. oh, wait, wait before you take another one. You know, it's almost worth going to solitary for that. You know, Phil nearly got away. Yeah, and call it a dry run. How much longer do I have to wait? Well, you only bring them up. One, two, three, four, five, six, ten, eight. Uh -huh. It's for your own good. Mm -hmm. Come on, more. No, later. Well, let me hold the tin. Yes, yeah, let him hold the tin. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, they say it's going to take almost a month mm -hmm. after the end of the war before any of us are going to be able to eat properly again. You'll have to remember that, Phil, when you get back to the States. Yeah, stay away from those book and author lunches. Mm -hmm. Are you going to America? Yeah. Oh, good for you. He's going to blow the lid off this place. And Shut up! 
Stop it. You're all dreaming aloud. You're not going anywhere. Look, he's got a perfectly good chance. He's had a good chance, and I... I lost it up. Ah, oh, forget it. It was just a rehearsal. No, it wasn't. I'll make it this time. No. What do you mean, no? I'll make it. That new doctor, the German, he's changed the routine. It wasn't sanitary leaving those cans there. They don't collect from the courtyard anymore. Why didn't he tell us that before? Who knows? Poor old George. You know what Napoleon always used to ask a general before giving him a new command? What? Are you lucky? <sighs> I used to think I was lucky. Over, under, through. Climb Tunnel Bluff. The only three ways of getting out of here. Yeah, there's one more. Get the Germans to escort you out. There is a rumor that the Swiss Medical Commission is due to pay us another visit next month. I bet Bismarck started that rumor. Yeah, but if I could just get him to, to escort me to the Dresden Military Hospital. You'd have to be dead to the world for that one. Well, the doctor did say I was suffering from listlessness. That creep. You know that he's threatening to court-martial anyone who doesn't salute him? Is he? Is he really? They send you to Leipzig for a court-martial. Yeah, by train. Je suis... Je suis... Tu es... Tu es... Tu es... Tu es... Nous sommes... Nous sommes... Vous êtes... Vous êtes... Ils sont... Ils sont... Asseyez-vous, s'il vous plaît. On va continuer avec le verbe de la Très doucement. Je suis, je suis, tu es, tu es, il est, il est. Nous sommes. Good for Pat. Répétez avec moi très doucement. Je suis, je suis, tu es. Didn't even notice. You know, it seems I was right, Herr Commandant. Yes? The general order you issued, they, uh, they are learning discipline and respect for the German uniform. I wonder when we shall reach Leningrad. Even the British, with one or two exceptions, and of exceptions, one can always make examples. Uh, Simon. Oh. Sorry, you're, you're busy. No, what is it? No, no, it's, it's nothing. It, it can wait. No, no, no. Go on. Well, I don't know how to say this, but uh, I've got to break the news to you that the parcels have just arrived and yours is... Oh, no. Waiting for you in the parcel office. You sod. <laughs> <laughs> officer, repeated refusal to salute a superior officer, deliberate and persistent insult to the German uniform. Pat. Sir? I'm sorry, Pat, not now. I've got to talk to you, sir. Yes, well, later. I've got to go and see the Commandant. I know. There's some question about Carter being court-martialed. Do you know what for? That's what I want to talk to you about. Yes, well, don't worry about it. I'm going to fight it. Well, before you see the Commandant, I think there's something you should understand. What is it, Pat? 
What do you know about German military law? According to the German military code, which is equivalent in your army to King's regulations, which applies to all prisons of war held by German armed forces, refusal to obey an order from a senior officer is a court-martial offence. I protest most strongly. Will that be all, Colonel? I take it that my protest will be noted. Of course. Uh, there is one other thing, Commandant. Under British military law, an officer to be court-martialed is entitled not only to a defending counsel, but to a brother officer as a character witness. Lieutenant! They've disinfected the bucket, sir. There'll be three guards with you from the start, so it won't be easy. But if there's a chance, on the train or anywhere between here and Leipzig, for both you and Simon to make a break for it, take it. Understood? Right. Make that plain to Simon. Take it. Where are you going? Brush my teeth. Good idea. Look, I'm not... You need to think I'm... Never crossed my mind. We're going to brush our teeth. Come on. If that fails, one of the Dutchmen was up for court martial last month, made this ground plan of the building. Here's the main hall. Now, beyond it, there's a corridor leading to the back entrance of the building. In that corridor, there's a gent's lavatory. Now, that's where you'll make the switch. Now, there's a guard there, but he's only a watchman, an old boy. A Bowman, the civilian lawyer, will be waiting for you just here. Yeah, what do we know about him? Well, he was appointed prisoner's counsel by the Wehrmacht because he speaks English. Where'd you get that information from, the Dutch? Yeah. Seems he's semi-retired, but he's not a party member. Goes by the book. Mm. Now, there's a guard posted outside the courtroom door. Here, your own escort goes back to the main hall. Okay. Take me through the trial once more. Now, the trial's straightforward. Prosecutor leads off, calls his witnesses, demands the usual sentence. Bauman then makes the defense plea. Then the military tribunal retire to consider their verdict. Now, there'll be a lot of movement now, people milling about preparing for the next case. And that's when you make your move. Yeah, but what kind of a move? That's a decision that only you can take. Weiter mit der Wache. English. Do you speak English? Or does he or doesn't he? I don't know, it's possible. Yeah, well, we've got about an hour, plus any stops to run up a score. You know what, this reminds me of a baseball game I once saw. It was the big one, the World Series. Everything was all tied up. Maggio came up to bat, and there was a man on third. Third? Yeah, 
third base like your rounders. Think he knows what we're talking about? Sir, that's uh, that's the base before home base, right? Right. See, the important thing is when you only need one run to win the game, you sacrifice another batter. He bunts the ball bunts. in a He hits the ball in a certain way so the other team can grab it, but when they do, the man from third makes it safely to home, scoring one run and winning the game. It's a beautiful sacrifice. That's what Joe did. Okay. I'll do the bunting. Our coach wouldn't buy that. Why? You always sacrifice for the fastest man. Well, not this time. Well, you've got the... You've got the autograph book with your picture in it. It'll impress the right people. He hasn't a clue what we're talking about. You know, maybe DiMaggio was wrong. Maybe he should have gone for the home run. Home run? Maybe... Yeah, home run. First, second, third, and home. Maybe he should have gone for the home run. Two runs instead of one. Get it? Yeah, but if you can win the game by one run for certain, why chance it? I mean, if Joe DiMaggio hadn't managed to hit a home run, they'd have lost the whole game, right? Since when did you become an expert on baseball? Yeah, well, it's all a question of odds, isn't it? Well, I can tell you one thing. The Yankees hardly ever lost a pennant. Yeah, but look where they're placed this year. Now, well, let's wait. We can always play baseball in Leipzig. Yeah. You go here. You're caught in a hat. Flight Lieutenant Carrington? Uh, I am Dr. Baumann at the service. How, How do, do you do? do? <laughs> the case will be called in a few minutes. In the meantime, perhaps we can talk, discuss the line of defense I intend to take. Uh, it would give me a chance to practice my English. Now, you understand that the trial will be conducted in English, uh, but from the point of view of the court, Flight Lieutenant Carter will be under German military discipline. Your German military code. Exactly. The regulations are very similar to your own. Uh, Napoleon copied most of it from the British, and the Prussians copied it from the French. We inherited it from the Prussians. I didn't know that. I have made a few notes on the rules governing saluting. And now, these regulations, saluting a superior officer, do not normally apply when off duty. That is, when a superior or junior officer is in civilian or casual clothes. And you're going to argue that Flight Lieutenant Carter was off duty at the time? As he was in casual clothing, it would have been an act of disrespect to his own service, the Royal Air Force, to salute when not properly dressed. That's great. Now, of course, it is only a, a technicality, it is a fine point, but the German law is very exact. Now, ah, three minutes, yes, we must go. Jetzt mit diesem Gericht verfahren. Bringen Sie den Eingeklagten ein, bitte. As a doctor, I visited the prisoner in his cell. The prisoner failed to stand at attention when I spoke to him. Did you make any charges against the accused at that time? No. Viewing you know, the fact that the prisoner was already under punishment, I wanted to be lenient. In spite of that, the next time you encountered him, he refused to salute you? Yes, on three occasions. What was his attitude? Insulting. What form did these insults take? 
As soon as he saw me approaching, he adopted an insolent, defiant manner. Kept his hands in his pockets. Deliberately? Yes. What was the attitude of the other prisoners at Corditz? They became increasingly contemptuous, disobedient towards my authority as a German officer. The accused was the ringleader of what was, in effect, a tacit rebellion against the German military command at Kolitz. In effect, yes. Yes, that is true. Das ist alles, Herr Mayer. Danke. Vielen Dank. Herr Präsident, I will not take up any more of the court's time than I can help. We are not concerned, uh, in this case, with the technicality of whether a British officer failed to salute a senior German officer or not. We are concerned with something simpler, much more important than that. The accused was ordered to perform a certain action under the German military code. He was shown the greatest leniency. He was given another chance. In fact, he was given three more chances to obey. He continued to refuse. It is evident that he knew exactly what he was doing. His refusal was deliberate. Under any military code in the world, such a refusal constitutes a clear act of mutiny. There is no need for me to advise the court any further. In the name of the German Reich and the Wehrmacht, I demand that the accused be given the mandatory sentence. Death. Dr. Baumann? Dear President, uh, with the court's permission, I should like a few minutes to consult my witness. Um es kurz zu machen, a brief, please. For the death penalty, it is a great shock. I do what I can. Uh, Herr President, I should like to call Flight Lieutenant Philip Carrington to the witness stand. Is his evidence relevant? I believe it is. Permission is granted. Flight Lieutenant, uh, here, please. Uh, Flight Lieutenant, were the other British officers aware of Flight Lieutenant Carter's negligence in failing to salute Herr Major Stab? Yes, they were. Uh, did any of the other officers follow his example? No, they didn't. Did Flight Lieutenant Carter try to persuade you or any other officer to follow his example? Certainly not. Herr Major Stab is new to Kolditz. Had it been customary to salute on every occasion the previous medical officers? Never, no, sir. Would you say Flight Lieutenant Carter deliberately failed to salute, or was it merely negligence? I would say that it was merely negligence. After this incident, all the other British officers seemed always to remember to salute uh, Herr Major Stab. That's correct, sir. Can you explain why? They wanted to make up for Flight Lieutenant Carter. Now, thank you. Does the prosecution wish to question the witness? Uh, nein, danke. Fertig. You may stand on. Uh, Herr President, I submit that far from starting a mutiny, Flight Lieutenant Carter appears to have averted one. Dessen ungeachtet kommt es nicht in Frage bei diesem Kriegsgericht. Speak English, please. Uh, uh, President, uh, I am sure the court agrees. We are not concerned whether anybody saluted Mayor Stab or not. A refusal by any individual under military discipline to obey a direct order in time of war is an act of mutiny. The punishment for it is mandatory. Death. There can be no exceptions unless the court is prepared to set aside the German military code. Herr President. I believe I have the right under the German military code to make an appeal on behalf of the accused. That is correct. Very well. Take the witness stand. Be brief, please. Well, as the uh, court records will show, um, 
Flight Lieutenant Carter uh, was shot down on a dangerous mission while he was over your country. He's a um, combatant, an ex-combatant. My point is uh, that what happens with a captured enemy, whether he lives or dies, is often decided by men who are not fighters, but by uh, politicians, administrators. But sometimes, whether they live or die, is left in the hands of the combatants themselves. And when that happens, they can judge each other as men by their own code of war. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, I believe that the officer on the president's right is wearing the G German Ritter Krauts, and the uh, officer on the president's left is wearing the 1914-18 War Wounded Medal. Both, therefore, are combatants. Equally, I, I, I just can't believe that uh, there's a senior officer in the German armed forces or a senior officer in any armed forces that would want to see a man like Flight Lieutenant Carter shot by a firing squad because he failed to render an adequate salute. It's just wishing to curtail the witness's evidence, I must warn you, Flight Lieutenant uh, Carrington, that this court deals only in exactitudes. It's a question of whether any of its members have or have not been in the front line bears no relation to this or any other case it may be called upon to try. But, Herr President... Light yeah. Lieutenant, I would suggest that in the interest of your friend, you stand down. In view of the seriousness of the charge, the case will be taken under consideration. How long before they decide? Three days, four days, a week. I can only say, Herr Commandant, I didn't foresee this, this sentence. This is no time for regrets, Herr Mayor. The discipline in Koditz rests on a knife edge of understanding, a respect between enemies. If Flight Lieutenant Carter is sentenced to death, the prisoners here will take it that that understanding has been broken. But surely discipline must discipline be upheld. Discipline cannot be imposed by sheer force. If I had twice as many guards, For your own safety, I have requested you be transferred to another post immediately. Come. If you would be so good, Herr Major. I'm afraid I have no news as yet, Colonel. Is there any hope? 
One of the judges, a major in the Luftwaffe. We have known each other for some years. I've been talking to him. He is very impressed by something said in Mr. Carter's defense. He is doing all he can. And the general commanding the Dresden area? I've also been in touch with him. I'm using all the means at my disposal, Colonel. Yeah. They'll send it all back to her, won't they? The court has reached its verdict. The court finds the accused, Flight Lieutenant Carter, guilty. The accused is judged to have contravened the German military code by his failure to salute a senior officer of the Wehrmacht. The accused is cautioned that any further breach of German military discipline will be severely punished. Thank you, sir. This officer is to be returned to his quarters. Maybe we'll be luckier next time. 